I need your help today. Me and Aunt Sally are gonna be going to the carnival, but I kinda wanna figure out how much money I'm gonna be spending because she said she wants to go on seven rides. So up here I wrote down the problem. It says, at the carnival, the entrance fee is $10 and each ride costs $5. So how much will I spend if Aunt Sally does wanna go on seven rides? The thing is, I don't know sometimes because sometimes she wants to go on five, sometimes she'll even go on 20. For her age, she still likes rides. But let's go ahead and figure this out because she said she wanted to go on seven. I don't believe her, but let's just use seven for now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use 10 and we're gonna put that here because that's a fixed cost. No matter what, I'm always gonna spend $10. Now, it costs $5 per ride, so I'm gonna put a five here and let's just pretend we don't know how many rides we're gonna go on. What we're gonna use is what we talked about before, a variable. So X is gonna represent a variable because we gotta know which rides or how many rides we're gonna go on. So if we go ahead and put seven rides here, we're gonna do five times seven plus 10. Now always remember that this variable can always change based off of how many rides we go on. That's why it's called a variable because it varies. The other thing I want you to remember is when you see something like this right here, always remember that means multiplication. We'll go into this later, but this number next to a variable is called a coefficient. So whenever you see that, always remember to multiply. And Sally, she always has a hard time with that for some reason. But let's continue to figure this out. We have five times seven, which is 35 plus 10. And Aunt Sally, what's 35 plus 10? 45. Perfect. So if me and Aunt Sally go on seven rides today, I will be spending $45. And Aunt Sally pays for herself, so she'll pay $45 as well. But hey guys, we got to go because Aunt Sally's already getting ready to go in the car and we're going to go, but we'll come back for more later on. Come on, let's go on the Ferris wheel. Hey guys, I'm back from the carnival. Well, wait a minute, how did my tie get up here? Aunt Sally, she wanted to go on a roller coaster for her last ride, and do you know how many rides she went on in total? 15 rides! 15 rides, Aunt Sally, I still can't believe that you're still awake after that. She's probably gonna go to sleep right now. Ooh. But anyway, I wanted to go ahead and finish talking to you guys about evaluating expressions. Now, we're gonna go ahead and try some problems on the board after I kinda loosen up a bit because that roller coaster was so crazy. Aunt Sally's hair was like this big. But the first problem we have is 47 minus 3y when y is equal to 7. So, when evaluating expressions given a variable, the main thing we wanna remember is to go ahead and plug 7 in for y. So, we would go ahead and rewrite it as 47 and then we're gonna rewrite this, but we're gonna put a seven in there. So whenever we substitute a number for a variable, you can go ahead and put it in parentheses like this. And remember, before we left to the carnival, what did I tell you? Whenever you have two numbers next to each other like that, that means multiplication. Always remember that. So we would go ahead and continue and remember our order of operations. What comes first, Aunt Sally? Multiplication. Perfect, now I think she's gonna go to sleep because She's getting a little tired, but we would go 47 and three times seven is 21. So once we subtract 21 from 47, our answer will equal 26. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a little harder one now. We have five open parentheses, K plus one, close parentheses, minus four, when K is equal to four. So now, if you're sitting there, ask yourselves, where are you going to put the 4? If you said you're going to plug it in right here, that is correct. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. And I'm going to rewrite everything all over again. So now, during our order of operations, and I would con continue to give you guys the encouragement to go ahead and use the checklist and put 4 plus 1, this is parentheses. So, we do that first. So we would be five times five because four plus one is five minus four. Now, five times five is 25. So since that's multiplication, we always do multiplication before subtraction. So we would do 25 minus four and that'll give us the answer of 
21. And let me go ahead and put a box around that too for Aunt Sally, because remember, she's studying along with us. Let's keep diving into the world of pre-algebra and practice some more evaluating expressions. As you can see, these are a little tougher, but remember, here we challenge you, because when you grow up one day and go to college, we want you to feel confident enough in what you do in your math, or any other subject for that matter. So, we have 8 divided by a plus 14 minus 3. Now stop there. Don't move on unless you have your PEMDAS checklist. So we're going to go ahead and plug in a for 2. So we have 8 divided by 2 plus 14 minus 3. Let's go through our checklist again. Parentheses, no. Exponents, no. But we do have division. So remember, if it's multiplication or division, we work from left to right. Here we have division only, so we do that. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. And we rewrite our steps because we're going to rewrite our work every time now. 4 plus 14, and we have 14 minus 3. Let me ask you guys a question. Which one do we do first? If you said addition, you are correct. Because remember, when it's addition and subtraction left, we always work from left to right. And I'm going to say that over and over again until you guys get it. So 4 plus 14 gives us 18. And 18 minus 3, which is our final step, gives us 15. And I'm going to go ahead and put a box around the answer. Because Aunt Sally's eyes are not that good. I just want to make sure she can see from there. So now we have, on the next problem, 12x plus 7. Now remember earlier in the video I told you that when there's a number next to a variable, what does that mean? What does that mean, Aunt Sally? Multiplication. Great job. So you have 12 times x plus 7 when x equals 3. So let's go ahead and plug in that 3 really quick. And let me make it a little bit bigger so Aunt Sally can see from back there because she woke up and she's ready to go back to the carnival again before it closes. Woo! 12 times 3, and Sally, I'm teaching right now, <laughs> plus 7. So we have 36, because 12 times 3 is 36, plus 7. And that will give us 43 for our answer. And let me go ahead and box that. And Sally, can you see that okay? Yeah. Great. A lot of times students think that math is completely pointless. They say, Brian, when am I ever going to use math in my everyday life? Well, I wanted to give you guys some examples like when I went to the carnival today with Aunt Sally. Remember, math can never be pointless and you're going to need it in high school, you're going to need it in college. So I encourage you to focus and put your emphasis on math. Be motivated too, because if you do that for math, you're going to do it for all your subjects and succeed.